Good day, and welcome to Big Bad Tech. I'm your instructor, Jim Pytel, and today's topic of discussion is converting complex numbers from rectangular format to polar format. Our objective is to learn how to convert complex numbers using rectangular format to an equivalent polar format. This lecture is predicated on the assumption that viewers watch both the complex numbers rectangular format and complex numbers polar format lectures available at the Big Bad Tech channel. If you haven't watched these lectures yet or only dimly recall their contents, please take the time to do so now. If you recall in the aforementioned lectures, we learned to express a complex number using rectangular format as a pair of numbers, a real horizontal x component plus or minus an imaginary vertical y component times j. Additionally, we learned that a complex number can alternatively be expressed using polar format including a magnitude z acting at a specific angle, theta. Rectangular format is especially well suited to performing the acts of addition and subtraction of complex numbers. Whereas, polar format is especially well suited to perform the acts of multiplication and division of complex numbers. The obvious problem with our arrangement are those occasions in which we are presented complex numbers in rectangular format and asked to perform multiplication or division, or equally problematic, presented complex numbers in polar format and asked to perform addition and subtraction. While these techniques are possible, they're cumbersome and unwieldy. A far better means of performing these desired functions is to first convert the arguments to a format suiting the desired function and then performing the necessary actions. If the final answer must be expressed in a particular format, one can always reconvert as desired. Today, we'll limit ourselves exclusive to the act of converting complex numbers expressed in rectangular format into an equivalent polar format. Later lectures will then examine the reverse action and additional math operations. Complex numbers using rectangular format utilize a pair of numbers, a real horizontal x component plus or minus an imaginary vertical y component times j. These can be respectively envisioned as the adjacent and opposite legs of a right triangle, where the adjacent is the real and the opposite the imaginary. The magnitude z, an angle theta of the equivalent complex number expressed using polar format, can be respectively envisioned as the hypotenuse, an angle formed between the hypotenuse and adjacent or real side of the same right triangle. The act of converting between complex numbers expressed using rectangular format to an equivalent expressed in polar format can therefore be thought of in terms of basic trigonometry. Let's examine the means of determining the magnitude z first. Given the real horizontal x component and imaginary vertical y component, are interacting with one another at a 90 degree angle, it can be said that the magnitude z is the hypotenuse of a right triangle formed by these components. Given the Pythagorean theorem states that the sum of the squares of the legs of a right triangle is equal to the square of the hypotenuse, this formula can be rearranged to solve for the hypotenuse, where the hypotenuse z is equal to the square root of x squared plus y squared. Now let's determine the angle. Again, given the real horizontal x component and imaginary vertical y component are interacting with one another at a 90 degree angle, one can visualize these components of the legs of a right triangle. When viewed from the perspective of the angle between the magnitude and the real axis, the real horizontal x component is the adjacent side, the imaginary vertical y component is the opposite side, and the magnitude is the hypotenuse. Given there exist several relationships between the adjacent opposite and hypotenuse in the form of the sine, cosine, and tangent function, we've got several options to choose from. The sine of the angle equals the opposite over the hypotenuse, or in terms of complex numbers, the sine of theta equals imaginary y over the magnitude z. The cosine function equals the adjacent over the hypotenuse, or in terms of complex numbers, the cosine of theta equals the real x over the magnitude z. Finally, the tangent equals the opposite over adjacent, or in terms of complex numbers, the tangent of theta equals the imaginary y over the real x. Let's use the tangent relationship since it's the most direct means of solving for the angle. By rearranging this equation and taking the inverse tangent or arc tangent of both sides, we realize the angle theta is the inverse tangent of opposite over adjacent, or in terms of complex numbers, the inverse tangent of the imaginary y over the real x. Note there is some trickery associated with angle calculations because the inverse tangent function solves for the angle inside the small right triangle formed by the real and imaginary components. This means inside the first and fourth quadrant, 
no modification is necessary. However, for answers inside the second quadrant, we must add 180 degrees to the result of inverse tangent function to obtain the desired theta angle referenced from the horizontal axis. Similarly, for answers inside the third quadrant, we must subtract 180 degrees to the result of the inverse tangent function to obtain the desired angle. Long story short, you need to be aware that complex numbers with a positive horizontal real x component and positive imaginary y component are in the first quadrant and should always result in an angle between 0 and positive 90 degrees. Complex numbers with a negative horizontal real x component and a positive imaginary y component are in the second quadrant and should always result in an angle between positive 90 degrees and positive 180 degrees. Complex numbers with a negative horizontal real x component and negative imaginary y component are in the third quadrant and should always result in an angle between negative 90 degrees and negative 180 degrees. And finally, complex numbers with a positive horizontal real x component and negative imaginary y component are in the fourth quadrant and should always result in an angle between 0 and negative 90 degrees. The inverse tangent function only works reliably in the first and fourth quarters and necessitates active intervention for the second and third quadrant when referencing the angle from the positive x-axis. In summary, when given a complex number expressed in rectangular format with a real x and imaginary y component, one determines the magnitude z of the polar as the square root of the sum of the squares of the real x and imaginary y components, and one determines the angle theta as the inverse tangent of the imaginary y over the real x, taking into account positive rotation is defined as counterclockwise and negative rotation is defined as clockwise, as well as active intervention for those values in the second and third quadrant. Let's try some illustrated examples of a conversion from rectangular to polar. Let's try some illustrated example problems of conversion from rectangular to polar format. Given a complex number A expressed using rectangular format as 3.1 plus J4.7, let's express it using polar format. Note we're in the first quadrant and we should expect an angle between 0 and positive 90 degrees. Let's determine the magnitude first. One determines the magnitude is the square root of the sum of the square of the real x and imaginary y components. Substituting in our given values, we find a magnitude of roughly 5.6. Now let's determine the angle. One determines the angle of the polar equivalent as the inverse tangent of the imaginary y over the real x. Substituting in our given values, we find an angle of roughly 56.5 degrees. 3.1 plus J4.7 in rectangular format is roughly equivalent to 5.6 at an angle of 56.5 degrees expressed in polar format. Here's another illustrated example of conversion from rectangular to polar format. Given a complex number expressed using rectangular format as negative 5.2 minus J5.2, let's express it using polar format. Note we're in the third quadrant and we should expect an angle between negative 90 degrees and negative 180 degrees. This will take some active intervention on our part to format the angle as we desire. Let's determine the magnitude first. One determines the magnitude of the polar equivalent as the square root of the sum of the squares of the real x and imaginary y components. Substituting in our given values, we find a magnitude of roughly 7.4. Now let's determine the angle. One determines the angle of the polar equivalent as the inverse tangent of the imaginary y over the real x. Substituting our given values, we find an angle of positive 45 degrees. This is totally wrong because we're obviously in the third quadrant. Referencing the angle from the positive x-axis by subtracting 180, we obtain an angle of negative 135 degrees. Negative 5.2 minus j5.2 in rectangular format is equivalent to 7.4 at an angle of negative 135 degrees expressed using polar format. Put your understanding of converting from rectangular format to polar format to the test with these example problems. By all means, pause the lecture and try this on your own. If you're tracking, you should have obtained the following results. For our first example, positive 4.9 minus j7.3 is equivalent to 8.8 at an angle of negative 56.1 degrees. Note rectangular format places us in the fourth quadrant and our resultant angle is between 0 and negative 90 degrees as we'd expect.
For our second example, negative 3.3 plus j 8.6 is roughly equivalent to 9.2 at an angle of 111 degrees. Note rectangular format would place us in the second quadrant and necessitates active intervention on our part to arrive at an angle between positive 90 degrees and positive 180 degrees as we'd anticipate. For our third example problem, 4.0 plus j 7.5 is roughly equivalent to 8.5 at an angle of 61.9 degrees. Note rectangular format would place us in the first quadrant and our resultant angle is between 0 and positive 90 degrees as we'd expect. For our fourth example problem, negative 4.3 minus j times 2.7 is roughly equivalent to 5.1 at an angle of negative 147.9 degrees. Note rectangular format would place us in the third quadrant and necessitates active intervention on our part to format the resultant angle between negative 90 and negative 180 degrees as we'd anticipate. The last example problem is a little tricky. Expressed using rectangular format, it's negative j 5.6, meaning it has no real components and the entire complex number can be expressed as a single imaginary component in the negative vertical direction. If we were to express this using polar format, using a magnitude and an angle, it's quite obvious it has a magnitude of 5.6 pointed at negative 90 degrees. Negative j 5.6 is therefore equivalent to 5.6 at an angle of negative 90 degrees. All right, that's about enough for today. We'll examine the means of converting from polar to rectangular, more math functions with complex numbers, and the use of scientific calculators in later lectures. In conclusion, this lecture presented the means of converting complex numbers expressed using rectangular format into an equivalent complex number expressed in polar format. Remember to review this material as often as you need to really drive it home. Imagine how well lab will go if you know what you're doing. Thank you very much for your attention and interest, and we'll see you again during the next lecture of our series. Remember to tell your lazy lab partner about this resource, be sure to check out the Big Bad Tech channel for additional resources and updates.